Well, the words are kind of different. So actually, Jack Nillers came up with the word telework in 1973. So, you know, the uh, 50th anniversary of the birth of the idea. I think the big thing to be clear about is actually the difference between hybrid work from home, which means, for example, you're going into the office three days a week, which means you need an office and you need to live nearby, versus fully remote, whereby you're fully remote, you're never going to the office, the office probably doesn't even exist and you can live wherever you want. Those two are really different. Often in the media, they get confused. Often people, uh, you know, when I talk to execs, organizations, they don't like hybrid, but they're thinking of fully remote or they have in mind fully remote and hybrid. So I think the big distinction is between hybrid, which most professionals and managers are doing, and fully remote, which is more kind of call centers, IT processing, some tech firms. The, the COVID pandemic was like an asteroid strike. It just changed absolutely everything. So to give you a rough idea, I have the best data for the US. In the US, in America, before the pandemic, 5% of full working days were from home. So 5% of days were from home, 95% were in the office, which tells you before the pandemic, it was pretty rare to work from home. People did, you know, one day every other month because your kid is sick or there are a few fully remote workers, but it's, it's pretty unusual. Then the pandemic happens and at the peak of that in April, May 2020, it went from 5% to 60% to an enormous increase. And all grads, pretty much all grads professionals were working remotely. I'm guessing, you know, everyone listening was probably working remotely in April, May 2020. Pretty much everyone with a university degree was. And then it slowly dropped back down and from the end of 2022 and now into 2023, in the US it's about 30%. And it looks like that's where it's gonna be for a while now. So to give you the long run picture, it's gone from 5% before the pandemic to 30% after the pandemic. That is a six fold increase. That is absolutely huge. And you know, it's changed everything. So sure, it's fallen. It's not 60%, which it was in April and May 2020, but it's still, an enormous change and it is permanently different and we are we are now in the new normal i talked to i probably talked to a thousand organizations businesses firms everything from the un world food program the ecb the fed to many companies and at this point they're all saying that this is where it is i mean there you know 2023 we're in the new normal you know we're not going back So there is a big debate about the impact of working from home on productivity. And you've no doubt everyone's seen in the media, folks like Elon Musk and Jamie Dimon being negative and other people being, you know, like Mark Zuckerberg being very positive. So the critical thing is to distinguish between two types. One is hybrid work from home, which is probably what most people listening are doing, which is when you work from home, let's say Monday, Friday. That's the very common amongst managers, professionals. Most people with a university degree are doing hybrid. There's another thing I'll talk first about, which is fully remote, whereby you never go into the office, you're fully remote, you can live wherever you want. So fully remote is certainly problematic for productivity. So the downside to fully remote is it's harder to mentor. It's particularly for young people, it's harder. They don't, they don't learn, they learn you know, better face to face. It's harder to be creative, we all know it's easier to come up with new ideas in meeting rooms and conferences and chatting, and it's harder for companies to build culture. So fully remote probably does damage productivity and the evidence looks like that. You could say, like, why would any firm do fully remote? Well, the reason is there are two big advantages. You know, it damages productivity, that's the downside. But the upside is you can get rid of the office, that saves you a lot of money, maybe 20, 30%, and you can hire globally. So if you're a tech firm out in San Francisco, you maybe say, look, I can lose 30% productivity in return for getting rid of the offices and being able to hire employees around the world. So fully remote is damaging, but has some upsides. Hybrid, in some ways, the more common version, which is, you know, say working from home just Monday, Friday, that actually appears on average to increase productivity if it's well organized. So, you know, you might say, how, how could that increase productivity? And there are two reasons. So, you know, well-organized hybrid, you let's say come into the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lots of meetings, presentations, time together, social, social time, 
Monday, Friday are working from home. The two benefits of productivity is one, the average European, the average American spends about 60 minutes a day commuting to work and back. And they also spend about 10 minutes more a day when they go to work getting ready. So they spend more time, you know, it's like horrible to think about it, but people that go into the office are more likely to, you know, I suppose that's good, brush their teeth, uh, shave, wear deodorant, put on makeup, wear clean clothes, wash. So what we see in the data is if you work from home, you spend about 70 minutes less commuting and getting ready. About 40% of that, which is 30 minutes a day, people spend more on their main job and the rest they spend on leisure, childcare, etc. So what that means is if you are hiring people that are hybrid and you let them work from home, let's say two days a week, over that week they work about one hour more from you. So that's benefit one, they literally work more minutes. Benefit two is in well-organized hybrid, what you're doing on home days is reading, writing, quiet work, kind of deep work. And it's actually much easier to do this at home rather than the office, which is noisy. And I have some research showing people are 4% more efficient at home when it's quiet. There's, you know, there's decades of research on this. So well-organized hybrid actually seems to increase productivity and the numbers we've seen in the data are something like three to 5%. So it's not huge, but it's definitely positive and it, you know, negative is for fully remote. Well-organized hybrid seems to be positive impact on productivity. Work from home has been through a huge evolution since 2020. So I, I've been working on working from home for 20 years, actually. I studied my first research in 2003. And to give you some history, from you know, up to 2019, it was mainly about saving office space. So what would happen is I talked to companies, they'd say, we want people to work from home. They always went fully remote. The word hybrid wasn't even invented. It, it just didn't exist in 2019. It was, it's a pandemic word. So 20, you know, 2010, 2015, they'd say, we're gonna have work from home. It's gonna be fully remote. We use it to save office space. 2020, pandemic hits. It's like an asteroid strike on workplaces, companies. Everything is different. Firms are in chaos, they're stretched, you know, they're scrambling to work out what to do. Initially, 2020, people send everyone home full time. It's not great, but it was part of social distancing. 2021 starts to be the birth of hybrid. And there's a lot of companies that are saying, we're going to have people come into the office two, three days a week. But the mistake they make is, maybe it's a mistake, it's partly deliberate, is they let individuals choose. So they say, each, you know, you have five people, you can all choose. You can imagine what happens. Some people choose to come on a Monday, some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday. For social distancing, that's great because people are spread out. But for productivity, it's horrible because I heard story after story. People would say, you know, I came into the office on Monday. There was only two other people there. I had to be on Zoom all day. It was really annoying. You know, why did I come in to spend my day on Zoom? So I decided to work from home on Tuesday. Tuesday, my colleague comes in, finds everyone's on Zoom. They're like, what's going on? You know, so it was just terrible. From summer 2022 onwards, there's been a big rise in what I'll call organized hybrid. So organized hybrid is either at the team level or at the whole company level, we say we want to coordinate. If you survey individuals, the reason they say they want to go to the office is to socialize and to work with colleagues. And given that, it makes sense to coordinate. So. A team leader may say to you know their team of 20 people, you guys, we're all gonna come in on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday's a choice day. Monday, Friday, I, I want you to work from home. No one's gonna come in. That's much more organized. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday is all the meetings, presentations, events. It's very active, it's very social. You come in at the end of each day, you're like exhausted from spending all day talking to people, but you feel it's a good thing. And having talk to you know hundreds of managers and employees they say that works they're happy with it employees come in they have a full day of meetings of socializing of lunches of trainings they feel really positive about it and they have those two days and they're happy and then they take the other three days and work from home so the future is either at the you know team by team for example google salesforce tell each team they're going to organize it or at the whole company maybe the whole company decides either way there's organization so that teams or the whole firm come in on the same day and work from home on the same day.
So the evidence is creativity is best in person. Now it's not to say you can't be creative remotely. There are a bunch of you know creative companies, think of Airbnb, Upwork, Yelp, Automatic, Quora that are fully remote, but it's easier in person. And in fact, there's a, there's a great study in Nature that came out about a year ago that takes groups of individuals and randomizes them into remote or in person. They're all given the same task to come up with a product and sit around and discuss a new uh, idea for it. So, you know, if I was holding a bottle of water, what else could you sell it for? And they get some third party to evaluate it and they find that the groups that meet in person come up with more ideas and better ideas. And when they interview them, they say, as you'd expect, you know, if you're six of you meeting in a room for two hours, if you're in person, people are concentrating, they're talking, they're focused on each other. If you're on Zoom or Teams for two hours, you know, some of the screens are off, People are looking away, they're muted, they're not really paying attention. So innovation is definitely easier in person and there's good evidence for that. That doesn't mean we wanna have people in the office five days a week. What it does mean is for innovative companies, you probably want at least two or three days a week. So talking about organized hybrid, it means say, we focus on getting people in on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we say all our meetings, creative sessions, training, things that require innovation and discussion happen there. But we are allowed deep time to think on, you know, Monday and Friday. So it looks like organized hybrid is great for innovation and creativity. In fact, there's evidence showing the best of all worlds is you have a mix of meetings where people talk and are interactive and quiet time to go read and think on your own. And organized hybrid kind of gives, gives the best of both. Now, you know, people often say, how can that be? There are some famously creative people like Elon Musk that have said everyone has to go back to the office. Well, you know, this is kind of... Uh, I would say that it's kind of the bias of the media. If you see, you see Elon Musk send everyone home, so it's forced everyone into the office in Twitter. The media, you know, spent a huge coverage of that. Two days later, he actually changed his mind and closed the offices and sent people fully remote. He's currently now thinking of closing the Seattle office because he decided it's cheaper to have people work remotely than pay the rent. Now, of course, the media hasn't reported the second bit of that. So all you see is the original decision. It didn't report that three days later he changed his mind. So Elon Musk changes his mind all the time. But from my research and from working with others, we've surveyed tens of thousands of companies. And I can tell you on average for typical companies across Europe and the US, they're very happy with the levels of innovation as long as they're getting people in two, three days a week. Where the problem is where people are fully remote. When I've talked to CEOs that have fully remote employees, they basically say, we know it reduces innovation. But the reason we're doing it is we're saving an office space and we're hiring people all over the world. So that's really the trade-off for fully remote. So the amazing thing about work from home is it's been growing for a very long time. So in the US, we created a data series going back to 1965. So we have this very long time series of the share of days work from home. So if you look back to 1965, you know, 60 years ago, you see half a percent of days in America work from home. Hardly any, hardly anyone is working four days at home. But it's been growing and growing and growing. And every year, every 15 years, roughly, it doubles. Why is that? Well, I've been working on this for more than 20 years. And from everything I've seen and from interviewed people, it's about technology. So cast your mind back, for example, to 2010. 2010, which isn't that long ago, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was no video calls, no Zoom, no Teams. If you were contacting people, you're using the telephone, you're, you know, having conference calls, and there was no cloud, which meant you don't have file sharing through things like Dropbox or Drop or Box. So if you go back to 2010, if you're working from home, you're doing, you know, conference calls and you're emailing files or sending it by the mail, and it's not great. Run it forwards to 2023. Clearly, the technology is a lot better and it's made working from home far more efficient, more pleasant. You can see each other, you can file, you can work on the same document at the same time. If you forecast forward, now let's look ahead. We know technology is going to keep improving. And in fact, you know, incredibly, the rate of technical change is actually going to accelerate. And the reason for that is the number of people working from home now has gone from 5% to, let's say, 30% in America. And you've seen a big shift in Europe and globally. What that means is every hardware, software company, and I talked to Satya Nadella last year, I talked to Eric Yuan at Zoom, all of these 
you know, tech, hardware, software companies, a lot of startups are saying, there's a huge market for great work from home technology. Let's develop it. Let's spend billions of dollars in R&D because if we win, we're going to, you know, be incredibly rich. And it means things like virtual reality, augmented reality, holograms, three-dimensional figures, better laptops, better cameras, better audio visual, improved software. They're all coming. I mean, just everyone, you know, you probably, you probably don't realize, but if you take Zoom or Teams, the raise hand function, that didn't exist in 2020. Virtual backgrounds didn't exist in 2020. Uh, teams only had four windows in 2020 before the pandemic. So all of these things, even in the last, all the expressions didn't exist. The chat function was very basic. So we, we, it kind of happened so quickly, we don't even notice it. But what's, what's currently going on, and if you look five, 10 years out, is technology is getting much, much better. So what that technology is, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. I heard an interview of the founder of Dropbox, and it was fascinating because he said, you know, when I founded Dropbox in 2009, it was really aimed at techies because nobody else had more than one computer. But it turns out it's pretty critical for the way we work now. So prediction is if you go five, certainly 10 years from now, we're going to see far better technology and that's going to support much more work from home. So work from home is definitely not dropping. In fact, if I was a CEO and exec predicting five years out, I'd say rather than being 30% of days in America, it might be 35%. How, how's that going to pan out? Some people are going to just spend a day a week extra at home. You're going to have a lot of people, say coders, managers that find connectivity so much better. You know, imagine you have a big hologram. You're talking to a hologram of your coworker. You may think you can spend, you know, you can have meetings like in Star Wars, where they have the Jedi Council or Star Trek, where everyone stands around and you think, okay, let's, you know, we're going to have one more day at home. Or there may be some professions that start to work at home that are fully in person. So a good example of that, is my neighbor across the road, she's a doctor. She said before the pandemic, I'd come in every day. I'd see patients every day. We never did anything over video. She said during the pandemic, we started to do one day a week and now two days a week of video meeting patients. Why? She said, I'm happy to do it. And many patients, they wanna do the same thing. They actually would rather get their prescription renewed or have an initial checkup or have ask advice on video call. It's easier for them. So what I see is, looking five, 10 years out, work from home, picking up, driven by technology, and all of us will probably work more days, and there'll be other people who are gonna to start to work partly remotely. The impact of work from home on which skills matter is a pretty fascinating topic, and it's right at the frontier of research. In fact, you know, something I was talking about with colleagues and some grad students to try and think about what would happen. So I'm gonna give you guesses rather than anything based on research. So my guess is the rise in work from home is gonna make skills particularly around self-drive, kind of autonomy particularly important. So the way work from home is panning out is you're working from home on Monday, Friday, there is typically no manager like over your shoulder looking down, are you working hard? Normally people are given performance targets. They have some meetings, but they're given a lot of flexibility. And if you're very self-motivated, you'll work hard. You may go to the gym, you may go for a run, you may pick your kids up, but you'll make up for it on the evenings or weekends. If on the other hand, you're somebody that kind of really needs to work under pressure as someone monitoring you. And I certainly see it in some of my students. Some of my students only really work to deadlines that may be harder to work remotely and you may be better off going to an in-person job. It's also the case there are some individuals that really need human contact. They need to spend, you know, they're, they're, they're real people people. And for them, it may be better to be in the office four or five days a week. Uh, there are some people that like to work with noise. You know, I know one of my co-authors, he often goes to cafes and finds cafes kind of lively and he finds it boring being at home. So I think the skills will vary you know, it's interesting, I, I've advised a lot of PhD students over the years, and I noticed for PhD students in economics, the ones that do well tend to be very self-motivated, can, you know, are okay with quite a quiet environment, say in the library or working on their computer, tend to be good at coming up on ideas on their own. And those are actually kind of some of the characteristics that work well also for working from home. So I can guess, but it's not obvious. And my, you know, the other thing I, I'm pretty sure we'll see is some of it will get wrong. 
I mean, my experience with work from home is we predict stuff, two thirds is right, one third you get surprised by. So I think what I've said is mostly right, but we'll discover, you know, when we do the research, there'll be some other characteristics we didn't predict. I mean, another one now, I can mention it, is height. So we're collecting data on it, but I've heard from a number of people that they said, you know, in the office, if you're short, you get discriminated against and people are just a kind of, you know, for, you know, horribly, I, I not, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm not, don't act well towards people that are short. And they said, look, when I'm working remotely, no one can tell height. Uh, you know, no one can tell a bunch of other things. And so it puts everyone on an even playing field. So I think there's a whole load of intended and unintended consequences that will happen.